Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Allah'ım sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. Muhammed'in fethiyle mağlup ve hatimini mağlup. Nasıl olur? Bir hak bir hadi. Ve salatı kadar müstakim. Ve ala alihi hakkın kadarihi ve hadan adim. So again, we're reading from the principles of the sovuf and the guide to gnosis, which is the way that uh, Sheikh uh, Sheikh Ali Laraki Al Husseini uh, chose to have this section of Ibn Ashur's Moshid al Mu'in translated into English and he does his commentary also with it so what he does is he takes each line and explains it but he does a, a nice job of explaining before and after each line so he says that in, in this introduction to Tasawwuf, Tasawwuf is the science of purifying the heart and character in order to attain nearness to Allah, the heart is the seat of intention, and all action is based on intention, as is known, and thus Tasawwuf is the heart of Islam. Imam Malik said, "Whoever takes on Tasawwuf without taking on fiqh becomes heretical, and whoever takes on fiqh without taking Tasawwuf becomes a, strain, a transgressor. Only he who combines the two will attain to the truth." Uh, Ibn Khaldun says that this purification was the general rule among the Salaf but when involvement in dunya became widespread from the second century those devoted to worship came to be called Sufiya or Ahlu Tasawwuf so in other words at one time this science was kind of merged with other sciences uh, and, and, and then it wasn't until um, after, usually this is when they start talking about the Muslim empires it wasn't until that point that the sciences started to diversify and become special, um, specialized so in other words, when a person in the early, early times of the Salaf took on Islam they took on the whole thing at one time Islam and Iman and Islam was taught simultaneously like the Prophet Sallallahu didn't, didn't give them like spiritual retreats to go learn Ihsan he didn't give them like intensive to learn jurisprudence, he didn't give them um, classes in, in Aqidah, that's not, that's not how the Prophet peace upon him, transferred the religion, but it, it happened all at one time instead, um, which is an important note because uh, sometimes people want you to show them where it was that the Prophet peace upon him, did this or he did that, and the, the thing is that when you ask for that kind of historical evidence, you're going to come up short because it's, there are innovations that came along because of the nature, uh, the context of society that people live in, we're not all like huddled around the Prophet peace upon him in Medina, watching his every move. So naturally, ways of trans transferring the education had to be developed. So he said that it is said in the name, uh, it is said that the name, the name of Tasawwuf, I'm sorry, the name Sufi. So he didn't mention this part, but uh, the name he mentions the name Sufi, but he doesn't mention. So the name Tasawwuf itself. Um, it is related to this kind of word for purity, the, 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 act of, the act of purification, to be purified. He mentioned that the heart, he mentions that um, that the, the science of purifying the heart, that the soul is the science of purifying the heart and character in order to attain nearness to Allah. This is true in the sense that tasawwuf as a science of learning what is a disease and what is the cure for the disease, these kinds of things, yes, that is a science which helps one attain nearness to Allah, but it is not ihsan itself. It is not ihsan itself, and, and there is a conflation. In modern times, there is a conflation with the terms. In other words, you have... Tahalni, uh, which is the process of removing dirt. You have Tahalni, which is the process of adornment. And then you have Tajalli, which is the, the vision of Allah. There's three different stages. So Tasawwuf is, is this process of, of Tahalli and Tahalli. But it doesn't mention anything about Tajalli, which is this process of seeing God. So Tasawwuf, if, we if we were to say that Tasawwuf is Ihsan, we would be saying that Ihsan doesn't actually have the purpose of the slave knowing Allah 
And that is exactly why most people don't understand the where knowing Allah fits within the science of, of the, the sciences of Ihsan. So, in other, in other words, again, it happens where there's a shortcoming amongst most people. Even some of the, the learned, there's a shortcoming, or you can say there's a there's a, a disconnect where the, the dots are not connected, to where the entire picture becomes clear. So, what happens is that because of that, people will embrace the sciences like this. They will start to purify and they will start to come close, but they'll think that the end in the science is coming close. Coming close, not being there, but coming close. And that's not that's not the case. So it is said that the name the name Sufi uh, is from Suf, which means wool, which these people wore, or that it refers to Ahl Sufa. And of course, to qualify the Sheikh's words, not all of them wore these not all of them wore these garments, but it's kind of like, you know, a few a few do something, and it tends to typify that group with other people. Or, or that it refers to Ahl Sufa, the, the poor companions who left everything to live on the bench of Sufa by the Mosque of the Prophet peace upon him. Other things are also said as far as its etymology is concerned, in other words, where the word comes from, and Allah knows best. Um, Tathawwuf is not taken from books, as inner purity is not quantifiable like fiqh. So, i.e. the knowledge that duhr is for raka'ah. Rather, it is a knowledge based or passed on directly from person to person in an unbroken chain back to the Prophet peace upon him, and the heart is its container. The teachings passed down in such a chain is called a tariqah, a path. And while the aim is identical, the methods may vary from one tariqah to another, and within each depending on time and place. And again, just to augment what he's saying, that is true, but it's also true that between Islam and Ihsan, there has to be a bridge. Right? Between Islam and Ihsan, there must be a bridge. So before there was tasawwuf, there was tariqah. Because there's always been iman. Um, the teachings passed down in such a chain is called the tariqah, right? So many turuk, many tariqahs, the, the plural of tariqah is turuk, many tariqahs trace back to Imam al-Junaid al-Baghdadi, who was the first to formulize the sawwuf as a science. He said, all the paths to Allah are closed, save for the one traveling on the footsteps of Muhammad, peace upon him, or, in other words, there is no tasawwuf outside of the sharia. So Imam al-Junaid al-Baghdadi was talking about if you want to get here, it's impossible without being having, without being it being based on here. So iman or the mu'min it does not floating in space. It's not just floating around, but there's Islam, and iman, and ihsan. Everybody good? All right. So what he does then he starts he takes the first line in the in the poem. He starts talking about tawbah. Now tawbah, the first element of tasawwuf is that is is that tawbah is obligatory immediately and absolutely uh, that a person, in other words, a person should make tawbah from all, from all things but especially major sins so major sins require a, a formal tawbah minor sins, you know, if you miss them if you miss making tawbah from minor sins know that just making wudu smiling, uh, shaking a person's, you know, shaking a, a, you know, a Muslim's hand you, you know, either you're married to them or the other gender or, or, or the same gender uh, these kinds of things they cause, or giving sadaqa also removes these minor sins, but major sins require a formalized act of um, repentance. The first element of tasawwuf, or the first element then of this process of purification, is that tawbah is obligatory immediately and absolutely, and any postponement demands a separate tawbah for the postponement. Which means that if, you, if you've done an action that requires tawbah, but yet you refrain from making that toba. You have to make toba from the toba. No, you have to make toba from the refraining from the toba. Makes sense. You did something wrong. It requires toba. You postpone. Now you have to make toba because you didn't make toba immediately. So this is so. It's not only is it a bad idea to um, so what shaitan will do is he'll try to get you to delay making tawbah because of something to do with your nafs or because of Allah's mercy. He'll say to you, like, 
you know, it's okay, you'll make Toba later. Or, you know, why would you make Toba now? You already did it. This kind of thing. So Shaitan will try to get, try to get you to delay. Because you're, you're, the delay of Toba actually makes one more distant. That makes sense. So you're delaying Toba actually makes one more distant from Allah in the first place because now you have to make Toba from Toba. So, so it's, like, it's like being two veils behind. Versus just one. Uh, Toba m- means to turn away from all transgressions, ma'asiyah, with sincere regret. So these transgressions can be, he starts listing them, minor, it can be a minor transgression, which is called sagira, major, which is kabira, it can be against Allah, it can be against people, and it can be known and it can be unknown. So sagira, an example of a minor sin, is forgetting Allah for one moment. That's, a, that's an example of a, of a minor sin that happens to us continually. Uh, another example of a minor sin, um, which can turn into other things, uh, is, for example, uh, glancing at something that you're not supposed to see. That can, that can, this happens, especially in our culture, it happens a lot. But that can become something great. Or a major sin would be, of course, something as heinous as uh, like fornication or drinking alcohol, the things that everybody kind of knows about. Those kinds of things. If if you if 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 a person was to fall into that, it doesn't mean your your Islamic career is over. <laughs> you know now I got now I gotta go become a Buddhist. You know some, but it's I mean it's it's unfortunate that there are people that do actually respond to it that way. There are people that they commit some kind of major sin and they feel they they feel so guilty about it that they actually start finding reasons why Islam something's wrong with Islam because they don't really know how to come kind of they don't know how to come back from that movement so they start to just kind of blame Islam and blame people or there's no reason to do that just make toba and you're you're kind of the best of those who uh, who sin or those who repent and the prophet said peace upon him the one who repents from sin is like one who has no sin so it's, it's nice um, you can make a transgression against Allah if you transgress against Allah it's not like what would you think is worse Transgressing, transgressing against Allah or transgressing against the people? Which one? Which one is worse? What do you think? The people. Why? Because Allah, is, Allah said that, that if we if we ask sincerely, that He'll forgive us. Mm. But for people, if you transgress against, you do something wrong against somebody else, you gotta ask for their forgiveness for them to forgive you. Right, and they may not. And may not. Yeah, whereas Allah, if you transgress against Allah, Allah can forgive you or He cannot forgive you. If you transgress against the people, if they don't want to, Allah cannot force that person to forgive you. It's worse to transgress against people than it is, so therefore it is worse to transgress against people than it is Allah. That's something that we often overlook. And uh, the transgression can be known and the transgression can be unknown. So in other words, you can be aware of it or you can not be aware of it. So that's why it's, it's very important. So to have, if you have a weird, for example, if you have a weird where it's, you're making a stakwa a hundred times, the blessing in that, right off the bat, is that you are required to make toba from your sins that you don't even know about. So if you're making a hundred stakwa every day, you know, with the, with the intention of, of getting forgiveness from Allah, that stuff is being removed from you, even though you didn't, really, you didn't even think about it. Uh, Toba has three conditions now. So Toba has three conditions. One, the first one is cease, ceasing the act, ikla', such as stopping if drinking wine, or cutting off one's words in mid-sentence when backbiting. So in other words, you can't. It's not Toba to. It's not Toba to say, well, I've already started saying this about so and so and so and so. It's wrong. When I'm done, I'll make Toba. That's not a sincere Toba. Sincere Toba is, and then and then. Astaghfirullah. Now, that's a, that's a sincere toba because you, you, you stop mid-sentence. Uh, toba is not to have the wine bottle, tilt it back and you know, finish it off and then just be like, well, when, I, when, I, when I'm not drunk, then I'll be all right. It's that you're, you're literally drinking and then you, and then you remember Allah and you remember that you're not supposed to do it and then you put it down. You're, you're forgiven. Or this is the condition, rather, of toba. So ceasing the act, al-iqla'ah, such as Stopping if drinking wine or cutting off one's words in mid sentence and backbiting. And then sincerely intending never to repeat the transgression. 
so that when you make Tawbah, you have to make Niyyah that it never occurs again in your life. Your intention is that it never occurs again in your life. If it happens again in your life, what are you supposed to do? You just make Tawbah again, but you made the same intention that it never occur again in your life. You understand what I'm saying? Like you're constantly renewing that, that it never occur again. And repairing damage caused to people or properties as best as one is able. Tarafi and hukuk, such as uh, re- refunding stolen goods. So it's not toba to like you used to be you used to be a thief, and now you've become upright and you want to obey God, and you made toba from you used, used to steal and all that. Your toba is not complete until you've done something for those people. Is you return their right in some way? Well, then the question comes: Well, what if like I moved away, or what if they don't know about it? And these kinds of things. And that's when you know you have to do your best. But if you can, you know, giving uh, giving sadaqah in the way of that that would so that on the on the day of judgment they'll find them they will find that with them, you know, that you repaid them in some kind of way, for example through charity or these kinds of things. Um, asking for forgiveness in abundance is desirable. By uttering the words of astaghfirullah. So again, if you're, if you, he's emphasizing that if you have a, for example, if you have a weird, then you're kind of, you're kind of fulfilling that. Yeah, but do you do you do you intend to? I intend to try my best. No, what I'm saying is like there's a difference between like let's say that you let's say that a person has anger problems and you're like, well sometimes I get mad and I punch people in the face. Alright? So it happens. You feel bad when it happens and then you so you say to yourself, I'm not gonna do that again. Even though you're like, but dude, I have such a bad habit. Okay, but are you intending to do it again? No, so that's all you're asked for. Okay. Yeah, like, okay, but I intend not to. If it happens again, then I have to go back to square one. Yeah. That's how you stay clear of... Because the thing is about sin is that once sin, sin occurs to you, falls on your heart, it, it doesn't... Um, it, it, if it's not cleaned, it cakes onto the heart to the point where the heart becomes black entirely. So the reason why we're constantly making toba is because we, we can't help but fall into sin. That's not even, so the question is whether or not am I, am I or am I not going to sin, that's really not the question. The question is, do I have the knowledge to remove it? And so, if we make toba constantly, then those black dots that occur to the heart, because of sin, uh, are taken away. And really, all we have is our heart, so if, if, it, if the heart becomes blackened like that, you know, usually it happens in a way that we don't even notice until it's, until it's very serious. Or we have a good friend to, to tell us. You know, like, hey, you know, please don't get mad, but you're kind of falling into the wrong stuff. Mm. So Toba is the first step to taqwa. Toba is the first step to God consciousness. Toba is obligatory because of the following evidence. All right, so he made his claim. He made his claim, and now he's going to bring the evidence. Uh, Toba is obligatory because of the following evidence. From Allah's book. Uh, Allah mentions, make Tawbah to Allah, if you're one of you, mu'min, so perhaps you will have success. In other words, O believers, make Tawbah to Allah, all of you, so that perhaps you will, you will have success. Now in this ayah, why does Allah say believers? He didn't say, you know, repent Muslims, He said repent believers, so you'll have success. Why? Because there's a difference between a person who will make Tawbah and a person who just does, what the, does the bare minimum. A person who wants to make Tawbah is a believer, which is a very important thing to understand. A Muslim is just somebody who, 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 says, who agrees to the rules. A mu'min is a person who wants to follow them. There's a difference. The Muslim wants to do bare minimum. The mu'min wants to, wants to draw close. The mu'min, the sign of a mu'min is that, is that they actually feel the sting of disobedience. As long as they believe, as long as you feel that sting of disobedience, you're a believer. But if you stop feeling that, 
then there's something wrong. You've not you've fallen from the state of being a mu'min to you're just a you're just a Muslim. You're not saying there's another God. Right? You're not saying there's another God. That doesn't but that doesn't make you a mu'min. So it, it's interesting in this ayah he said, Make tawbah to Allah, every one of you believers, so perhaps you will have success. And many times in this these types of ayat, when Allah says perhaps, it means you will. It means that you will. But Allah is not obliged by anything. Right, Allah is not obliged by anyone or anything, but it's it's a glad tiding. Yeah. I was I was wondering. Hopefully, this isn't straying too far from the topic, but I was wondering if um, there's a distinct defin- definition of separation between mu'min and Muslim. As far as Quranically, can we define those specifically and have it? There's the Quranic demarcation between exactly. a Muslim and a Mu'min. Exactly. Well, the fact that Allah mentions the, those different types of people by name, mm-hmm. you know, the fact that He addresses them, yeah, you had Muslimun. You know, He doesn't say that, but what I'm saying is the address is there. That the words are there. You see the word Muslim. You see the word Mu'min. You see the word Muhsin. You see them. The fact that they are there indicates that they are demarcated, and there are many traits that you see related to each one. Um, you know, to, to do a Quranic study about the different levels of Deen in the Quran would be interesting. You know, there's here's, here here are the Muslims. Here are the Mu'min. Here are the Muhsin and Muhsinin. And what are the characteristics that God always talks about yeah so for example Allah will talk about love when it comes to the muhsinin a lot you see that you know um, but it'd be interesting to see but if you if you open the Quran you will see definitely those words mentioned and the address is different and the demarcation between them Quranically speaking that'd be an interesting study yeah. but the, but it's definitely there uh, another one Allah said ask forgiveness for your Lord and then make Tawbah to, to him so uh, now each time, why does a person make toba? Because Allah told them to. Because Allah told them to. So the, as we mentioned earlier about the difference between the knowledge of people, that there's the commonality of people, and there's the elite of people, and there's the elite of the elite of people. Uh, at the level of the elite of the elite, the only reason why those people make toba is not because they see sin, it's because Allah told them to. The only reason why they worship is not because they see worship, it's because Allah told them to. So it's true slavehood and that they don't have any portion for their self, whether it be good or bad. Right. And so when they hear these different ayat, it hits them very directly because it's a command. So they do what they're told without having to understand or to understand. So here, ask forgiveness for your Lord and then make tawbah to Him. So ask forgiveness and then make tawbah. And then, uh, this is 1152, and then another one, you who have iman, O, o, o people of faith, make sincere tawbah to Allah, it may be that your Lord will erase your wrong actions and admit you into gardens with rivers flowing underneath them, 66.8. And then, certainly Allah loves those who do tawbah, and He loves those who purify themselves. So you see this, the characteristics from God related to the actions of the people. Yeah. Okay, so your question is the, the, the reason why or the motivations behind each level of slave. Like why, what's going on with that? Okay, so let's take like, let's take um, someone who is, who has outwardly committed a, committed a sin, outwardly speaking, right? Their limbs have fallen into something that they're not, that the Sharia doesn't allow. Okay, so a person who is at this, a person who is in the commonality of people, his or her judgment about things is going to be very subject-object oriented. So I'm answering the question in a way I think you might understand. 
So if, if, if it's not clear, just ask you know, in a different way and I'll explain. So uh, their relationship with God is very much subject, object oriented. I exist, you exist, and as far as I'm concerned, my perspective is such that I have independently, willfully chosen and decided that I am going to go against your command. And as a result of that, I am 150% responsible to correct this situation because it's your right as a commonality of people. No, I, no, I am, sorry, I'm going to correct the situation because I don't want to go to hell as a commonality of people. Most people don't think about pleasing Allah or not pleasing Him. At the most basic level, I don't want to go to hell or I want to go to paradise. All right. The second person is not that far, not that far off. There is, but the subject-object relationship is a bit, it's starting to crumble because they don't really like the distance that creates, the dichotomy. So they fall into a sin. What, what's more disappointing to them is not the sin because they know that Allah can forgive them. It's the idea that there might be distance created. That's the level of, of the person, of the, the elite, you can say. But the el person at the elite of the elite for them, the sin is to say, I. The sin for them is for even, even momentarily for them to say, so for example, here's the statement, I have committed a sin. That happened. The person at the elite of the elite, they're going to say, Astaghfirullah, for saying I, even long enough to say, I committed the sin. Because to, to them, to, for them to say, I committed the sin is worse than any sin, because it's, it's, it's shirk. It's shirk for them because they're seeing that someone other than Allah has, has, has caused the action to occur. So what makes them upset is level one and level two coupled with level three. They're upset that it happened in the first place. They're upset that of any distance that might have happened. And they're most upset about the idea of, there being a, of them attributing a self in the first place. So they have three, three degrees of, of sorrow. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that person at that level makes Toba for saying I. That, that occurs to them. That's why uh, Shaykh Ahmed Tijani, he said that I never reached, he said that I never reached the maqam of Toba. Shaykh Ahmed Tijani said that. He said, I never reached the maqam of Toba, meaning that I was, was gone. I never reached the maqam of Toba. And that's why Allah. Uh, Allah describes Himself as being Tawab and Rahim. This is a very subtle point. Allah describes Himself as being Tawab. Which means that the only one who makes Tawbah in reality is Allah. But he attributes, he, he, attributes, he attributes it to the slave out of His grace. Whereas a level one, you don't see that. A level two, you don't see that. A level three, you see that and you know why the Quran mentions it. You're experiencing. Like, you have a Quranic experience. Yeah. And then finally, before we have our you know what this is. <laughs> Alright, so from, from his messenger, peace upon him, there's also this who said, O people, make Tawbah to Allah and ask His forgiveness. For cert I certainly make Tawbah to Allah a hundred times a day. This is in Sahih Muslim. So it's, it's quite Sunni to have a weird of a stikfar. It's quite Sunni to have a weird of a stikfar a hundred times a day. Now the, the, the Tawbah of the Prophet is even beyond the elite of the elite because he's not making Tawbah for this idea of positing a self far be it from him, peace be upon him His Tawbah is based upon levels of perfection So in, the, in his Muhammadan reality there is the occurrence of one perfection after another perfection after another perfection after another perfection In other words God shows Himself to him again and again and again and again, never repeating itself, never happening twice in the same way. And each time God appears to him, uh, that perfection appears to him, the Prophet makes Tawbah. In other words, he, he makes Tawbah from, from one perfection compared to another perfection. That, that's his kind of Tawbah. That's his kind of going back to Allah, going back to Allah, going back to Allah, going back to Allah, at different levels of perfection. So I mean, sin doesn't even. I would be like, not even before. 
not before he was a prophet, peace upon him, not after he was a prophet, peace upon him. And that is, inshallah, we'll stop there just for this introduction to the science of the Sawwuf. Uh, I think it's, it's nice, it's simple, uh, but it's, it's foundationary. You can build on it, inshallah. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون سلاما على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين